Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. It feels so good to have you here with me today, right now, in this moment, wherever it is that you're tuning in. Welcome or welcome back. For those of you guys that are brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary, professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And for those of you guys that are old friends, Welcome back to our beautiful, wonderful, delicious, comfortable home base where, um, yeah, I'll be pulling the charts for you guys and also shuffling the cards. So how are you? How are we doing? How are we feeling? As you can tell by the title of today's video, we're going to be diving into the Aries new moon, which I have it pulled up on my laptop. And I also have Franklin's iPad here, which I have the guide to 2022 the ebook guide that I've written for all of us for the collective and it's pulled up on the new and full moons of 2022. This is where I have all of the full moon rituals for those of you guys that like to partake in a little bit of witchcraft intention setting or manifestation. It's up to you. If not, that's totally fine. You're, you know, allowed to work your magic however you see fit. There's no judgment here. Okay. As long as you don't judge me, I won't judge you. And even if you do judge me, I don't have it in my heart to judge you. All right. So speaking of which, speaking of magic, do you guys see this? If you know, you know, if you know, you know, you probably, if you're watching this in real time, this is our candle. Okay. If you guys don't know what this is last, well, this week, um, the time that it is I'm filming and it's, uh, March 30th, I created a manifestation candle because one of the main messages that came through was that of love and romance. So I lit a full blown candle from the apothecary for everybody, the collective, and we're already starting to see results. I will say really quickly before I dive into the details of this video, the, the flame has been going in and out, which shows me that we have some blockages that we need to work on and we need to rebuild those energies. But honey, this Aries new moon is here for that. Okay. Aries energy for the most part in a nutshell is so powerfully potent when it comes to leadership when it comes to taking charge when it comes to being an advocate for yourself when it comes to being a warrior when it comes to putting yourself out there when it comes to breaking free of old hindering obstacles obligations past life situations things that have just been keeping you in the mud for too long you're kind of been stuck it kind of is giving me, I don't want to say an RV, but if you guys know about the um, the four wheelers when they're out, you know, zipping and zooming and doing what they do, and then they get stuck in the mud. And then the more that they hit the gas, the more that it feels like it kind of like backfires. Aries is the opposite of that. Aries is when you finally get yourself out of that mud and you're just zooming through. You have clarity, you have direction, you have forward momentum, you have movement. So it's that time in our lives across the board no matter where you're at it's that time in your life where you're really feeling like things are moving forward where you're really starting to see the progress happening the energy that kick in the butt that behind like the kick in your behind that you've been really needing all right so we're really really loving that energy right now you guys know i've been talking a lot about chiron also transiting through the sign of Aries and Chiron is that wounded healer the the space within our lives where we have to advocate for ourselves and we have to put ourselves first we have to think okay who am I what do I want and can I even take people with me or do I have to go this path alone for a lot of you guys you have been having to traverse and move through this path within your life for the last I want to say four to four to five weeks, you've been having to kind of do these things a lot. Well, longer than that, but you've been feeling it strongly, very potent the last four to five weeks. There has been a little bit of back and forth that we've been seeing within the charts. You guys know this because there's been a lot of tangled webs that we have been working through when it comes to our lives, when it comes to watching the world around us, that has a lot to do with the square that was going off um, between uh, Mars and Uranus. That creates so much tension, you guys, in the stars. It creates so much tension within ourselves. It creates fighting. It creates break, 
uh, the breakdown of things, the breakdown disorders in our relationships, disorders within ourselves, all of those things start to just bubble and brew up to the surface, especially under the light of the, of the last full moon. So don't be surprised. I would not be surprised if you were saying, you know, this is what happened, Jess, there was an accident, you know, this unexpected development came. It's, it does have a, a tendency sometimes of feeling a little negative. You guys know I don't like to say that one anything is one is either a positive or a negative, but if I had if you guys had to describe it as anything, I'm I'm pretty sure you would say that it's a negative. This is accidents, this is fights, this is getting punched in the face. Um literally we saw that. This is things that just completely create a lot of tension, things that break down last minute, right when you need to have something uh support you and lift you up is the moment that it breaks down. There's a lot of energy and emphasis on the head, stress, pressure, high blood, high blood pressure. Those are things that you really want to keep an eye out. Those things start to spike during this time as well as migraines and you're also going to see yourself grinding your teeth. So these are some things that we really need to be aware of. The best way to deal with them is by being physically active, by getting yourself out and moving. This could be actual physical activities such as going to the gym, going for bike rides, uh, doing things that that bring out your competitive energy, your competitive urges, that is so awesome. That's the best way to manipulate this energy, aka work with this energy, okay? I use the word manipulation not in like a negative form, but a more positive, um, in the more positive uh, relation to how we can, you know, impact and influence our environment so that we're not becoming a victim to it. The other thing is like, you don't wanna provoke any arguments, but at the same time, you might not know necessarily that you are provoking something or someone. That's just what happens with uh, Mercury now transiting into the sign of Aries. It's something that you say or something that you do that can create a, a, a provoke a fight or pro provoke a reaction. I don't want any of us to be walking on eggshells. That's the last thing I want you guys to do, especially not at the new moon. If anything, I don't think that you should be reckless, but I think that you should be forward. I don't think that the you should fear, and with as I'm looking at the charts, I do not feel for one second that any single one of us should be fearing what we say, what we do. If anything, Aries energy says, listen, I have the, the, uh, the capacity to deal with whatever the universe throws my way. I am fully capable of making smart choices and decisions and the risks that it is that I'm taking are calculated, but they're gonna pay out for my highest and greatest good. And anything that could ever happen because of the choices that I make, I am fully capable and I'm intelligent enough to deal with those, with the repercussions of that, okay? So if you know that and if you're operating from that and you're being confident and self-assured and making really smart uh, choices and gambles, you have nothing to worry about. Sometimes life is all about the risk in order to get the greatest reward. And at the time of this new moon, this Aries new moon and the way that these planets have been positioned, it is absolutely supported by the planets for you to make some really calculated uh, gambles in your life that feel good. Of course, always listen to your intuition first and foremost, you guys. This is not about consulting the, the psychic, the medium, the intuitive, your friends, your family, your dog. No, this is about what you think and feel for yourself. Remember, Aries is I am, and Chiron represents our deepest healing is going to come from us putting our wisdom first. You are 1000% capable of dealing with anything that comes your way based upon the decisions that is that you've made. And when you step into that, you own your masculine power, you own your strength, you own your courage, okay? You can still be fearful, you can still not know the outcome, but either way, you have everything that you're gonna need in order to deal with the good and the bad that comes from that, I promise you. One thing that's been jumping out, we need to talk about this. One thing that has been jumping out has been the chariot card a lot lately. Now, chariot is connected to cancer, but that's cardinal sign, man. That's all about energy. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get it moving. There is feelings, emotions, intuitive nudge, nudges and guidance that is leading you along this path. There is this really healthy balancing of the best side of you and the worst sides of you. And when I say best and worst sides, I mean how we identify with ourselves, meaning our ego. It's what we 
are most proud of and the things that it is that we might struggle with, but we're still proud of them, but we still need to give them a little extra TLC so that we don't fall victim to it and fall into you know, either one of the too much light, too much dark. We want to have a nice, healthy balance. And the fact that the chariot keeps showing up is literally showing me that the collective has somehow, in some way, shape, or form, transformed a negative situation or a difficult situation into something that is so positive and is actively propelling them into a brighter future. And chances are this has everything to do with someone or something that was stealing from you, taking from you, didn't have your best interests at heart, was working to stab you in the back. Seven of Swords is very manipulative. It's energy that requires you to be cautious and use a healthy level of discernment so that you can intuitively pick up and sense what's going on in your environment before it comes up and sneaks you in the back of the head, like and like clubs you in the back of the head. These are things that you want to be aware of. Chances are your intuitive like feelings have been giving you some hints and chances are it's been coming through your frustration your irritation right this is aries is known for it's for being irritable it's known for having zero patience zero tolerance i could have sworn i put my phone my phone and my stuff on do not disturb but that's fine that level of zero patience and zero tolerance is going to be your clue. For those of you guys who are like, Jess, I'm the most impatient person ever. I'm very emotionally explosive. I'm emotionally reactive. Again, this is you learning how to work with your chariot energies, your feelings, working with the good and the bad of your strengths and your weaknesses without judgment. That's how you make them work for you and not against you. So during the new moon, I want you to observe what has been really annoying you? What has been irritating you? Where is your patience most thin? Because there's something there that, that needs to be adjusted. And there's something there that if it's been an issue for a long time or something that's been bothering you for a long time, this is that point along your journey at the time of the new moon where you're going to plant the seeds in order to get you the heck out of Dodge and just be like, you know what? Honestly, enough is enough. I don't need to tolerate this anymore. And to be quite honest with you, it doesn't seem like your intentions are all that good. And when I say your intentions, I mean the person that is bothering you or the thing that is bothering you. They may actually be taking more from you than giving to you or they may be trying to give too much to you and totally disrespecting your boundaries and totally disrespecting your peace. There is something here that is creating, from what it is that I can see, this nine of wands here upright and the seven of cups reversed. This is you being like, I really need to not be defensive all the time. I need to not be in warrior energy all the time. That way I can gain some additional clarity into the direction in my life. Okay, so as active as Aries energy is and as active as this new moon will be and from what it is that I can see, there is this healthy level of disengaging so that you can stop being distracted by what everyone else is doing, what everyone else is saying, what they want for you, where they see you so that you can then put the energy and the focus on yourself. A lot of times when the hermit card jumps out, which the fact that the hermit card is not here doesn't surprise me, but it's kind of giving me hermetic mode. But uh, one thing that I, I, I've noticed within the tarot community is that when the hermit card shows up, immediately everybody thinks that they're, you know, you're going to be isolated. You're going to be pulled away from humanity. You're not going to be talking to anyone. You're going to be quiet, sitting within, sitting withdrawn from everybody, meditative, in the dark. And that's simply that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. I can see that for a lot of you guys, you might actually be, I don't want to say by yourself, but maybe in your headspace, in your feelings, connecting with yourself, connecting with nature, being out moving, biking, rollerblading, having music in your ears. It's just a total vibe. You might even be starting an active ritual or routine when it comes to your actively pursuing your spiritual your spirituality actively pursuing god actively pursuing your angels actively pursuing the connection with your ancestors actively pursuing building your chicken coop out in the backyard i might be speaking for myself here okay that's what it is that i love and that makes me feel so tuned in and so vibe like vibing with with myself with the universe with god i mean I'm not going to go off on that because I, I literally will talk about that forever. I do want to tell you guys one last message that Pluto is in the final, final degrees of Capricorn. 
Oh my God, you guys, I've been talking about this for years, 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 years. This is absolutely epic. This has everything to do with karma. This is everything to do with manipulation. This is everything to do with power and control. And it has been such a long journey. It's been very exhausting for the majority of us. I will say that. And I really want you guys to celebrate just how far you have come. You have come so far. And even today, I'm celebrating a major milestone within my own life when it comes to my business. I can't share it with you guys, but it's absolutely phenomenal. I'm so proud of myself. But there, it's because of the transformation. It's because of the growth. And this growth that has been occurring within your life is usually and most likely from the looks at the charts from the last couple of years, you guys know I've been here for you since day one. It was not comfortable for me to come on to the YouTube channel. I'm an introvert at heart. I'm a Virgo, like triple Virgo here. And it, it, it was more what I was called to do and more where I showed up for myself, how I showed up for myself and how, uh, and how I showed up for the divine, honestly, because that's what spirit was speaking. But it was this major, incredible, uncomfortable, difficult, deeply challenging, deeply stressful, a lot of pressure growth that's been happening. And when Pluto is exiting or in the final degrees of Capricorn, it's those final pieces that are falling together. And it doesn't have to make sense right now. But I do want to tell you guys and I do want to encourage you to have faith, to be courageous, to keep going. Because there is this final chapter, this long chapter that's been closing out. It's nearing it's, it's, it's the closure of it right now. And you're just kind of writing the last of the book. And there is, with Aries energy, it's a new season. Now, I'm not saying that this chapter is going to close out at the time of the new moon. I'm just saying that you are actively involved in rewriting this new venture that is, is being co-created with the universe right now. And if you have been exhausted, if you have been difficult, if you have been spiritually strained, if you have been mentally drained, if you've been emotionally exhausted, this is something that is really going to be the light at the end of the tunnel. I know that Every time that you guys come on the internet and come on YouTube, there's some intuitive reader, some tarot cards promising you the light at the end of the tunnel and this week and this day and blah, blah, blah. And you just wait and you wait and you wait and it doesn't come to come to fruition. And I've been telling you guys, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We are almost there. Keep going. It's Pluto, it's Saturn, and it's Uranus. And, and sometimes Jupiter gets in the mix, right? This is the time where you guys know I've been authentic since day one. I've never promised a light at the end of the tunnel if I didn't see it. And if the light at the, at the end of the tunnel was years down, I would tell you it's years away. And this is how you can navigate through those turbulent waters. I will never lie to you. I will never lie to you. I'll never make a promise that I can't keep. And I will promise to you, like I, like I said from the very beginning, when Pluto exits out of Capricorn, this is when we're really going to start to see some some lightening here of this energy and we're nearing it. We're getting closer. I'll have the direct dates for you. I'll comment them down below in the description box. I'll pin them. Keep in mind that Pluto does, uh, will transit, start uh, moving retrograde as it always does, but we're going to get through this together. I do want to say though that with this Aries new moon, the way that it's lighting up the chart and the way that's lighting up the area of your life, and you're going to want to look at your natal chart and see what Aries rules within your chart. But the way that it's lighting up this chart, this is very, very active. So I want to see you guys really pushing yourself as much as you can to, to move outside of your comfort zone and find the pleasure within what makes you happy, literally what makes you happy. And if you have to break away from anything or anyone or any place in order to go somewhere and do something, the Aries new moon, again, April 1st at 224. I have the chart pulled up for 222, honey, but technically it's 224 is the time to do it. Oh my God, the candle's still burning. I'm so surprised. Oh, and then for those of you guys that don't know, the apothecary is open right now. Full restock. Well, actually not right now, but Thursday. I'm filming on a Wednesday. Thursday of the 31st. And then you guys have been begging me for the body butters. I do have really exciting news. Next week, okay, I'll just go ahead and tell you right now. So next week, um, I'm gonna be launching, relaunching a, a new website 
called Queen Bee Homestead. It's pretty much just my home base, but just like how I work my magic, there's two sides of me. I'm sure you guys have noticed this by now. There's a side of me that is the witch, the astrologer, the intuitive, that's just so connected to the stars. And then there's that side of me, that Virgo side, that's really connected to the earth. And that is gonna be, you know, my farming, which you guys know, I've been doing a lot of homesteading here, but I'm gonna be introducing Queen Bee Homestead, which is where you'll find all the body butters. This is gonna be so, you guys won't even notice the shift for the most part. There's just gonna be a, a new home for that, like a new website for that. But um, the, where you will notice the difference in the shift is when it comes to the shipping of it all. So I do have help when it comes to that finally. Because I, I, that is a whole process all by itself, but I'll be whipping it all up. I don't even know how I do it all, you guys. I, I'm just literally fueled by like passion, <laughs> passion and fury at this point in coffee sometimes and water, but um, in good food, I mean, and fun, but, and my chickens and just my animals, just my life. It's just, you know, when you do what you love, it's easy to kind of just do it all the time. So yeah, uh, yeah, so the body butters will be coming back. That'll be not this week, but next week. And the only reason why there's a delay is just because I want to give the body butters an amazing photo shoot. But when I tell you, honey, those body butters are whipped, honey, and they are ready to go. And they, I'm literally the queen of body butters. So if you haven't gotten your hands on it in the past, just know that it was one of my best sellers in the past, like back back in the day, and we're just bringing it back. And it's the, uh, the reason why it's going to help make shipping so much faster is by separating them so they're not getting intertwined. It just makes it so much easier, guys. Behind the scenes, it makes it so much easier. So thank you so much for tuning in. I know this was a lot, and I know that I have so much energy right now. I don't know if you guys can feel it, but I just got some really good news, and there's just some major developments that are happening that literally came from, a, I don't wanna say a bad thing that happened, but a really challenging moment, like a challenging week. And because of that, if it wasn't for that circumstance, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So it's just another thing where everything happens as it should. And again, the, remember the, the card that it is that I pulled, look at that, King of Cups, come through. Um, the card that it is that I pulled was the Chariot. Are you gonna focus? There you go. The card that it was that I pulled was the Chariot. And basically what that means is this is you learning how to I just heard the word maximize, but you being able to work both the good and the bad, you know, the, the pretty and the ugly in order to make something that works for you. Every single one of us can do it, but it's really just a matter of you taking the time out and sitting with the divine, sitting with the universe, sitting with your higher self and having a conversation and consulting them. And I'm looking at the clock, it's 2222 at me at the time of me saying that. If you are consulting other things and other people, you're going to get confused. But if you consult spirit, if you can consult your astrology chart, if you consult your higher self, if you consult the divine or your ancestors and ask for their protection and ask for their blessing, which honestly, I feel like the majority of us maybe don't do that enough. You will have no problem when it comes to you being prosperous, when it, you, when it comes to you being protected, abundant, and things working out in your highest and greatest good in your favor. There should never at any moment be any type of fear that should stop you and hinder you when you know who and what has your back. And having said that, you know I have your back and you know I'm a force to be reckoned with. Okay, like, uh, come on, it's been years and I have not led you guys astray. So I'm sending you guys all of my love. There are a lot of um, new ch changes and developments that are going to be, I don't want to say new things that, I just, that I'm introducing, but more so bringing back my favorite things that you guys love, I love from the Sacred Circle Tarot School to Bahati Love Notes to um, the Body Butters to reopening the apothecary. It's just, you know, you know how it is. But until then, you guys, make sure that you do have roses on your altar, red roses. If you don't know what it is that I'm talking about, that's fine. Just go ahead and follow up on last week's video. I'll link that down below. But until then, I'm sending you all my love. Thank you so much for tuning in again. It's so good to see you. Please, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a heart or a rose or a smiley face in the comment or maybe say birds of a feather flock together. That's what just came through. Birds of a feather flock together if you are watching this right now or if this helped you in some way, okay? That's how you can pay back. Pay it forward, pay it forward, you guys. All right, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.